you'll need a rolled up towel that's like a hand towel and then half a tennis ball uh, cut in half tennis ball um, and you'll start out barefoot so what we're first going to do is a half tennis ball foot smoosh so you'll see that it's like this little dome right you're going to try and smoosh your toe arch so you'll put it right behind your toes and then try and smoosh your big toe and pinky toe knuckle kind of like you're trying to hug it so you're building the toe of the horizontal arch of your foot and it looks like this so the tennis ball is going to collapse a little bit under your foot but over time i want you to think about all of your little metatarsals spreading wide and making a little mound over the tennis ball you also might have some fun foot cramps so good luck <laughs> um, but you're going to do this for about 30 seconds each foot um, and this is going to allow all those little muscles that like abduct and adduct between your metatarsals to chill out um, and move a little bit more and then it's also going to help warm you up for our flexor hallucis longus smoosh which is next so after you've done both feet for about 30 seconds your flexor hallucis longus is this cool muscle that goes from inside your big toe through your big toe knuckle across the bottom of your foot and then through your heel all the way up to the outside of your calf google it if you want more or maybe i'll put a picture in here but you're going to try to shorten that so what you do is you build up the toe arch first so you try and mount the big toe knuckle and pinky toe knuckle so that is now squished and then you're going to try to shorten your long arch so then you're going to keep that squished with one hand and then grab your heel with the other hand and try and elongate the outside of your foot so you're trying to bend your toe arch over to the side ideally you'll do this with an extended leg or you can help each other do this um, I don't really want to tell you what to feel, but you'll probably feel a pretty strong stretch on the outside of your foot, kind of like along here in your ankle. It's not a bad thing, but when you're ready to come out of it, I want you to think about inhaling and then pushing your big toe knuckle forward and then pushing your heel forward. So you kind of like swoop your way out of it. So you're in this position, toe arch is bent, so that's shortened and then I pull my heel towards my big toe and elongate this outer part of my foot. And then when I'm ready, I'm gonna inhale, big toe comes forward, and then heel elongates. And that's just gonna help make sure that that first metatarsal is gliding, which if you have a swoopy toe, it's not. So that's the side to focus on the most, but do it on both sides. Um, I put 10 breaths on each side, but you might need to do it longer, um, see how it feels. Once your feet and flexor hallucis have been squished, you're going to do lying ankle alphabets. So I'm going to leave it up to you if you want to do both at the same time or if you're just going to do one at a time, but you're going to draw the alphabet. So A to Z, I have no preference if it's uppercase, lowercase, cursive. Uh, so 26 letters on each foot. Um, take your time with it. Uh, see which position is more challenging. Uh, see if you can bend your knee a little bit, that helps. Push your big toe knuckle forward a little bit, that helps or makes it harder. Um, but alphabets on each foot. Then towel, knee smash, hip flossing. So uh, you're going to take the rolled up towel, place it right behind the bend of your knee and then let your leg just kind of relax down so you're not flexing your leg over it. It's just getting kind of floopy. And then if you can, you'll grab under your shin or you can grab your knee, but this is the ideal location so that way you're actually smushing the towel up there. And the towel is gonna try and get like popliteas and everything else smushed back behind your knee. So that's what that's there for. My left leg is grounded, my right leg has the towel. And now I'm going to inhale my right knee towards my right armpit. Exhale towards the center line of my body. Inhale towards the outside. Exhale towards the inside. And you're gonna do that on both legs for 10 breaths each. So you're going to relax down here. This one stays grounded. Hug that in until you get comfortable with the towel being behind your leg. And then inhale outside, exhale inside. And notice what this leg's doing. So as I go out to the left, my right one wants to come out. Try and keep it grounded. So big foot, or sorry, big toe knuckle, pinky toe knuckle, heel, whole foot on the ground and it doesn't move as my other leg goes out to the side. So take your time with those. Next, after you've smushed your calves, part of what we were doing there with the flexor hallucis longus one and with this 
which the towel will also be hitting that flexor hallucis attachment point, um, is to help with shin and calf rotation. So now you're going to do self-resistant internal and external calf rotation. So this is the position I like. You can also use that rolled up towel, rolled up long ways if you need to for reaching purposes. But you're going to think about having that really wide toe arch from the tennis ball stuff. And my right arm is gonna wrap around the outside of my right leg to the inside of my right foot. And then I'm gonna to try to swivel, keeping my foot in a level plane, swivel over towards the inside so my shin's actually rotating in. Holding for a second and then relax. Create tension, hold, and relax. And then my left arm's gonna swoop around the inside of my right knee to the outside of my right foot and now my foot's gonna to try to swivel out as I pull tension back that way. So creating tension, hold. That's not very good on my body. Uh, tension, hold. Cool, so he surgery made that go down. Um, but anyway, you're gonna do six to 10 on each side, each position. So like six to 10 external, six to 10 internal, six to 10 external, six to 10 internal on each leg. So that's the first little block of your warm up. Do that as needed. Um, Kind of be mindful of it, pay attention to what you're doing, breathe, all those fun things. And then you're going to stand up for elbow squeeze to finger thumb touch wrist flossing. I don't know, man. You're gonna squeeze your elbows in and act like you're Spider-Man. So you're going to think about squeezing your armpits together so you're activating your serratus anterior to posterior and opening your heart up, so elbow squeeze in. Then you're going to touch your thumbs to your index finger and then bend your wrists up, floss your wrist forward, touch your thumb and middle finger, bend up, floss forward, and uh, ring finger, sorry, bend up, floss forward, pinky, bend up, floss forward, and then you're gonna do it all again, keeping this nice and engaged. So, thumbs to index finger, bend up, floss forward, middle finger, bend up, floss forward, Ring finger, bend up, floss forward, pinky finger, bend up, floss forward. And so when you're flossing forward, think about this whole line getting longer. And as you're flossing up, think about that whole line getting longer. So you're creating length, not like flexing, right? Like you're trying to swoop. Um, and we'll have you do that twice. So each finger, two times total, but do them in consecutive order, please. Um, Next, we're gonna do internal shoulder rotation with an inhale to reach. So, think about having jazz hands, wide hands, whatever you wanna hold, hold an orb, whatever you wanna think about, the energy in your hands, and you're going to reach forward as you inhale, turn your thumbs in and down, kinda of think about stretching your upper back muscles, inhaling and then exhaling, pulling back. So, inhaling, rotate your arms in towards the center and then out to the sides as you reach, Exhale, slowly rotate your thumbs out as you squeeze your shoulder blades together. Inhale, reach, grab your upper back. Exhale, pull back, put your heart up. So we're gonna have you do six to 10 there. You can pause, you can do one arm at a time, just kind of see what you feel. Uh, after those, you're gonna do super slow teapots. So you're going to, after you've worked out your arm lines, you're gonna help elongate them and your lateral lines. So you're gonna inhale up, Think about pinky finger to pinky toe being super long, but especially armpit to hip bone. We're trying to stretch through there. And then exhale back down, inhale up, kind of feel it out, exhale back down. So when you're doing them, pay attention if your body's kind of twisting towards one side, right? Versus being here and I'm collapsing into my side and compensating that way. So keep this side long as you reach up and over towards it, back down, this side stays long, this side stays long, back down. Long thoughts, trying to stretch yourself out, right? So, six breaths each side there. Then, you're gonna do a toe press to pelvic tilt and hip shifting. So, think about having suction cup toes. Imagine the ball is under your foot still, so you're not scrunching, you're pressing down. So all your toe tips are pushing into the ground, feet are nice and level, you can feel your whole foot on the ground and you're just kind of aware of it, right? Think about the front of your body being really long. So you can kind of feel like the center line of your body being lifted up nice and straight. So from there, toes pressing down, you go into your hinge. So the hip shifting is just 
straightening one leg and bending the other leg forward, and then shifting side to side. So it's like your hip bones are like little tractor toggles. And you're just kind of feeling it out. Doesn't have to be super straight legs, doesn't have to look anything like what I'm doing, but I want you to stretch out your hips and your butt. So once you've done the hip shifting, you're going to do pelvic tilt. So think about your hands can be here or on your knees, but you're going to stay in that bent position, toes pressed down, round your lower back, and kind of go into a cat pose, and then inhale to drop your belly, reach your chin forward into a cow pose. And then exhale, round, inhale, arch. So those ones, I want you to think about being as long as possible. So imagine like two pelvic points and two chin points being as far away from each other and then as close together towards each other. Um, that one you're gonna do by feel. Feel it out, take your time. See what feels good, let me know. Um, and then standing trunk rotations. Pretty sure they were our last one, but they're a good one to get you like off and ready after what we've done. So you'll have super grounded feet, especially after all the stuff you've done, right? And then, you're going to soften your knees. Imagine turning from your center, right? Um, I'll send you a little chart of what the spine looks like, but and I'll tell you about that in a second. But turning from your center, so your abs are going to make you turn to one side, other side. Your arms just kind of flail with style. Um, so, spine stuff. When we're forming in utero, so out of a clump of cells, our spine starts forming with our sphenoid bone and our coccyx, so furthest endpoints. And then the vertebrae grow and develop in between there, so those points then grow further apart. The top part and bottom part of your spine, so the furthest parts, turn the same direction. So if I turn my head to the right, my tailbone also turns to the right just a little bit, right? And then as it gets closer to the center, so like this part, these two vertebrae are going to turn the opposite direction. So as I turn my belly button towards the right, my heart actually turns towards the left. And that's just how those vertebrae work with all the little pulley systems and everything on it. So I thought that was interesting. But part of why this is good is because it helps get spinal fluid moving. It helps align chakras in yoga or, in other words, nerve bundles. Um, not saying they're the same thing, but not all words work for everyone. So, you're gonna do 20 breaths here. You can inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, or just breathe however you want, but breathe 20 times. And then slow it down. And you're ready for your gym workout, which is next. Okay, mom and dad, day one. So, mom, you're gonna start with trap, pull, head turns. So you're going to ideally skin to skin, so hand on your trap, but through a shirt's fine too. You're going to grab it and like just kind of like push into it and then you're going to pull your hand towards your collarbone as you turn your head towards the side you're pulling so i'm pulling my left trap my head turns left and you're just going to do that for up to 10 per side uh, we're doing this because it's going to help with head position before you do your chest press which is next so 10 per side there Dad, you're starting with rotational dumbbell bench press, and Mom, it's actually your next thing too. So, we're gonna have you do flat bench, and you're gonna start with your palms supine, or facing your face. So it's gonna be a reverse grip chest press, and you're going to rotate as you push up, so that way your palms end up being like kind of forward in neutral position. Uh, sorry, not neutral position, in the end position you always do. And then you're gonna pull them out and down, push up and together as you rotate. Out, down, up and together. So, uh, both of you are actually gonna do 10 to 12 of those. I want you to really feel like your chest getting broad and your chest getting narrow as you keep your shoulders wide, if that makes sense. So, 10 to 12 of those uh, for dad. Mom, that's your next thing too, so 10 to 12 of those. Really focus on not just turning at your wrist, but making it your whole arm lines, right? So, starting out palms up, rotating to palms down and then back. Um, it's part of why you did so much shoulder stuff in your warm up and prep stuff, right? So, back to dad. Supine lateral dumbbell raise. So you're gonna start in neutral position. So start with your palms facing your hips and then you're gonna end up with your thumbs up. So you're gonna go light on these. 15 pounds is not light. Start with like eight and see how it feels and go slower if you need to. Um, 
you're going to do up to 15 also. So starting out here, think about opening up from your heart center as you raise out to the side and then lower back down. Raise out to the side, lower back down. Also with how your left shoulder has been feeling, let me know how these feel. If they feel terrible or if you feel it in that one specific point, let me know and we can have you do some stuff for it. Um, short term, poke your core quid process and floss that around and then try to like push your anterior delt back and see if it helps. Um, but tell me so. So up to 15 of those, Dad. Mom, you're gonna do a dumbbell step back with spiral swing. Uh, we're open to naming suggestions. This is what we got. So you're gonna have a dumbbell in one hand. So my left leg is gonna stay planted, my right leg is gonna step back, whatever hand has the dumbbell, that leg steps back, and I'm gonna cross my right hand over towards my left hip, and then as I come forward, I'm gonna swing it back up and bring it to my shoulder, and then down and back, up, down and back, up. So you're shortening your spiral line here, and then elongating it as you return to that starting position. So you're going to do 10 per side there, start with like a five, see how it feels. Um, it's gonna feel kind of funky when you switch sides. So one is gonna be more challenging than the other. Work on that internal arm rotation and then catching it on your shoulder. It doesn't actually have to touch your shoulder, but it's coming up as if it is. Um, so 10 per side there. Dad, next one, half kneeling, high to low, cable, lat pull down with opposite lever. Something along those lines. So you're gonna set up your cable up high. If my left hand is the pulling hand, then my left knee is gonna be down. So half knee, like I'm showing you from the side, you'll be facing the anchor point, but this is a better view for you. Half knee in position, uh, back foot should be pushing down towards the ground, whether it's curled under or pushing on the top, doesn't matter, but energy towards the ground, that's gonna help engage your glute and your abs. This foot's pushing straight down and the chest is up top. So, with your lat pull down in front of you, I'd say use like the single handle or maybe the rope, like the single rope handle. Uh, you're going to initiate the movement with your left lat, so shrug your left lat down towards your butt, uh, and then kind of rotate your elbow in, and then the opposite hand is gonna lever up, and then back down. So your right arm is levering as your left arm is pulling, and then vice versa, kind of pause at the bottom, and allow your arm to kind of rotate a little bit as you pull. So when you go up, it's gonna rotate in a little bit. As you pull down, it's gonna kind of scoop down a little bit. So that's not required, but I highly recommend it. You're going to do 10 per side there. And then mom, your final thing. I want you to pick up the heaviest possible thing uh, with good form and stuff, but the heaviest thing that you could grip while keeping your abs engaged and hold it for three to five breaths. So heaviest possible thing that your little tiny hands and little tiny pinkies can hold. And I want you to think about all of your fingers holding it, squeeze your armpits together, lift your heart up so you're as tall as you possibly can. And you're gonna take three to five really slow breaths and then set it back down. So, go ahead. Uh, after that, or sorry, then you're done, Mom. Uh, Dad, you have one more thing, lateral wedge step to balance. So I'm gonna make sure that you guys actually have a wedge. Uh, it's gonna be up against the wall. Do not do it freestanding because it will slide. But lateral wedge step to balance, it's not a lunge. I'm gonna think about my tall torso. I usually start with my foot in the middle of it so that way I know the distance that I'm gonna be. And then I'm gonna step, the leg that I step on is gonna bend kind of like the start of the lateral lunge. But I'm loading my right loop and then come up, balance, catch myself, balance, catch myself, bounce. If you are worried about tipping over, that's because I have a swoopy left big toe, big toe knuckle pushes down. Um, if you're worried about falling onto it or if it doesn't feel good when you initially load it, look at your foot land and think positive thoughts. Also tell me what you feel. But uh, if you're having a hard time with your leg being like kind of fearful or pinchy when you step, let me know. Um, if it feels good, do 10 per side. Um, if you know that one knee is going to give you more grief, kind of do that one first. Or, executive decision, wedge step to the left first, so that way your right big toe has to ground a lot better on that side. So, 10 per side there, that has been day one. Do as many rounds as you want that feel good, and let me know if you have any questions. Day two is up next. Okay, day two. Hopefully day one went well. 
and let me know if you have any issues with it. Um, starting on day two, mom, you are going to do lateral push kick steps. So these are gonna work on balance, but they're also really good to help warm you up for your box step ups, which is your next thing. So you're gonna start out, stand up really tall and kind of like feel it out. See if you can like shift your weight to the right leg, shift your weight to the left leg. And then when you have a pretty good center of balance, you're going to use your ab muscles to help lift this leg up internally rotate your femur. So when this happens, a lot of times people hike their hips. This hip bone shrugs down still and you rotate your femur in. It's gonna take work. Um, and then you're gonna elongate the inner arch. So you're trying to push your big toe knuckle and inner heel as far over as you can. Don't like push it too far, but just reach it as far as it'll go. So you're gonna do 10-ish each side, 10 or more each side, and feel which one's harder. My right one's so much easier than my left one. That one pinches and then it goes, but it takes a second and that's good stuff to tell me if you're feeling that, right? Because I know that my left hip is more externally rotated because of lots of reasons, but during these specifically, my hip pinches, so it's harder for me to do that one. Up to 10 per side. Dad, lateral goblet squats. Your first thing, goblet, uh, could be kettlebell or dumbbell, doesn't matter to me, but three points of contact, hands, forearms, chest. So it's hugging to be part of you. Uh, your lateral wedge steps from yesterday hopefully helped you uh, prepare for this one because you're going to start out here, move your feet a little bit wider, and then you're going to squat down towards one side and then come back up. I have no preference if you alternate or if you do all one side, but what I want you to think about is your feet pushing into the ground, your knee's gonna go over your toe and your hip bone is gonna pull back into socket and then come back up. So that calf rotation that you're doing in the beginning of your warm-up stuff, super, super important for this because if your calves don't rotate, your feet can't ground, this isn't gonna happen. Um, so up to six to 10 per side on those. Uh, it doesn't have to be heavy. And if you're noticing that you're doing this more than an actual squat, let me know, we'll work on it. Um, mom, box step ups. I want you to step up on the highest thing possible without pain. So I'm using a 12 inch box. You're gonna start out behind it. I'm gonna say do body weight first because I care more about the height than the weight on these ones. So belly button engaged. Think about like adductors up to your belly button being like a little triangle of a pulley system, right? So this foot's all the way on the box. I'm pushing my right foot down and I'm gonna squeeze my left and right glute forward and up as I touch the box with my other toe. You can put it down, I just lose count, and then back down. So once you have your foot on that box, have it stay there so you have a really good foot connection. And then belly button pulls you up, butt pushes you up, and then lower back down. Over time, you can totally add weight to these, but I wanna see how it feels. Things to watch out for, if you're noticing that your knee's caving in like this, try to push your pinky toe knuckle down more and see if that helps, um, or let me know, because that's not really a pattern that we wanna add weight to. Um, or if it feels, if you just let me know what you feel. <laughs> um, next, Dad, you have extended side angle air guitar. So, talked about this one. Now you can see what it is. Uh, I did learn it from YouTube Yoga with Adrian. so shout out to her. Uh, you're going to take a big step forward. The back leg is gonna be kind of out of like 45 degree angle. Front leg is gonna be forward. My left femur, my front femur is gonna pull in, so I feel my like left glute engage. And then I'm gonna lean my torso over, so without crunching my left side, torso stays long. I'm gonna kind of like side hinge over, and your elbow can go on your leg, or your hand can go on your leg, whatever you need, but try and have a nice long body, and then you're going to air guitar with your thumb. So thumb is gonna lead, inhale as you go forward, rotate your arm around so that the thumb leads the whole way. You can also be down here, inhale, up and around. And then I would like you to try to inhale the other direction so you'll turn your palm up, thumb leads, inhale, and then exhale, inhale. So. You're going to do six to 10 each side. You don't have to go both directions. Opening back is better, not better. I would like you to focus on opening back more than both. So if you're only willing to do one direction, open back. Um, six to 10 per side. Mom, front anchored band overhead press. So hopefully you'll be able to see me. I have a front anchored band over here. I'm gonna grab it like 
wide, wide enough that my shoulders could fit in between it. And you gotta kinda stand pretty close because you're gonna be going overhead. So this anchor is at like my throat level, um, anywhere around there, but you don't want it lower than like collarbone. So you'll start out here, grabbing it wide enough for shoulders, thumbs inside the band, hands on the outside of it. And you're going to have a little bit of tension outside, so it's not too poofy in the middle. And then toes press into the ground, tailbone elongates, belly button engaged, and then push up, ideally in line, and then lower it back down. These are way harder than they look. So your whole body's gonna have to be engaged like a plank. And then your shoulder blades have to move up the back. And then back down. So if you're noticing that as you're pressing, see if I can do it this way. This is the wrong anchor point, but if you notice that as you're pressing, your elbows come out like this, let me know. We're trying to keep them scooped in and then press up so that way this elongates back here and your upper back muscles are having to kind of pull back and engage. So you've done like the cross body Y raises in the past. Now we're strengthening those muscles with a different load and it's gonna be a little bit more challenging, but I think you can do it. Uh, careful not to train your neck. So you're going to do 10 to 15 of those, mom. Dad, you're gonna do kettlebell bottoms up press slowly. So I want you to take the lightest kettlebell they have and bottoms up press, pretty obvious, right? Bottoms up. You're going to grab the weight here. I recommend thumb right here, but I don't, you don't have to. Um, and you're going to scoop your elbow in. So starting out nice and in line. I have my hand on my belly because I tend to tilt forward if I don't. So that's up to you. And you're going to try and push your thumb back, keeping your elbow nice and in line with your body and then pull back down. So start on your right arm and see how it feels because there's enhancements made, right? So from here, elbows, kind of, biceps kind of scooping in, so serratus is engaged. Inhale to press up, and then exhale to lower back down. So the bottoms up part is gonna try and tip over, right? So that's gonna add with wrist stability and shoulder stability. Keep me posted on how they feel. Uh, super, super slow, like as slow as you possibly can. And if you get to like here and start to realize like, oh, this, there's something kind of tight right here, or something's about to go doink, stop if you can or breathe and try and inhale through that. See if you can like shrug your shoulder forward, shrug your shoulder back, see if you can make it go away. It's up to you if it hurts or not, but six to 10 per side. Uh, mom, lying loop hold with alternating leg lower. So it's kind of like dead bug, but the difference is you're gonna have a loop around your wrists or forearms. I'm gonna leave that up to you. Uh, forearms is gonna be easier than wrists just because it's closer to the leverage point. So you're gonna lay on the ground, have this around there, and then have like jazz hands or energy hands or fists, whatever you want. Tuck your tailbone under so that way your lower back pushes into the ground and then lift your legs up. So from here, upper body's holding this position. You're gonna inhale, exhale back up, inhale to lower, exhale back up. So super similar to a dead bug, but different. So we're gonna have to do those for six to 10 per leg, keeping that loop hold the whole time. Again, watch for straining in the neck. Think about shoulders down and back and then out. Um, and let me know how they feel. And then dad, you're gonna do slow lateral leg swings. So, key point, slow. Um, I don't want you just going crazy with them. So, stand near something. Uh, that little internal pulley system I was telling mom about from adductors up to belly button, think about that. And then you're going to externally rotate your right hip as you kick your right heel forward and out to the side, and then internally rotate your hip as you kick your heel that way. So inhale out to the side, inhale, sorry, exhale as you cross across your body. Just breathe. If you wanna do the fancy breathing, inhale to open, exhale to close. Otherwise, just breathe. It will help, but. So, side view, standing up tall, think about tailbone long, heart lifted, and then kick your heel out to the side, cross. So I bet you your sides are gonna feel pretty different and let me know if, how, how that feels. So I have a theory, but I don't wanna tell you what to feel. Let me know what you feel on both of your hips on these ones and if there's clicking, popping, or tightness, or one's way harder than the other. So that has been day two. Do it for as many rounds as feel good and stay tuned for day three. Hey mom and dad, day three is now. So mom, also I have hiccups. Mom, you're gonna do bent a hold with light fists. 
and head turn. So like this, just touch your fingertips to your palms. The A part, your head is the point, your arm, arms are the legs of the A. And you're gonna go into that bent position, so hands stay by your hips. Shoulder blades are kind of squeezing together so your chest is open. <laughs> and then turn your head towards one side, turn your head towards the other side. So you're gonna be activating your upper back muscles in, in between your shoulder blades, opening up your chest, and allowing your neck to sit better on its atlas. So 10 of those, uh, right and left counts as one, do both, uh, 10 each side. <sighs> um, supine rotational bench rows, dad. So that is going to be on a bench just like normal. So knee's gonna be under your hip, your hand is gonna be directly under your shoulder, and you're actually gonna start with a dumbbell neutral. So real quick on this, make sure that you're working on that index and thumb knuckle pushing down. So push those down into the uh, bench and then rotate your elbow in so your elbow crease kind of goes towards the front of the bench. Then you're starting out with your hand neutral, so facing the, ben the bench, excuse me. And then you're going to rotate as you pull. So your shoulder blade is gonna shrug towards your butt, turn your palm forward and pull back towards your hip bone, and then let it back down. So chest is opening, arms rotating out, and back down. So you're gonna do 10 to 12 of those. Really focus on opening up from your chest versus just your arm, right? So you're opening up from the center line of your body to do that. Uh, 10 to 12 per side there. Mom, after you've done your bent A like this head turns, uh, you're gonna do alternating bent pulley rows. So you will grab two dumbbells, get back in that bent position, so toes pressed down, belly button lifts up, bent position, and then you're going to initiate the movement with your right shoulder blade shrugging back, thumb pulls towards your hip, and thoracic spine rotates a little bit, so your left arm hips down, bring it back down, left one comes up, rotate, and back, back down. So you're doing pulley rows and kind of shimmying through your thoracic spine. So you are rotating through your trunk a little bit as you do that, <laughs> as you do that. Um, think about the row being the thing that starts it and then twist from there. So don't just start through your trunk, start with your arm and your shoulder blades. But, uh, 8 to 12 per side there. So you're staying in that bent position the whole time. Um, if you feel anything in your hips or anything, think about spreading your toes, pushing your feet through the floor, and see if that helps. So annoying. Um, Dad, you're gonna do single arm face pulls with the rope handle, and I want you to poke your abs with the opposite, opposite hand. So if you're doing it, it's gonna be anchored in front of you. Hand is gonna be here. You're gonna rotate in, so that way your elbow is gonna end up pointing out. So you're internally rotating your arm poking your abs with your other hand, and then initiate by shrugging your shoulder back and then following through with your thumb near your chin. So, band for reference, you'll be here, poking abs, and then pulling back, pause at the back, let it forward. So, you're going to be working your upper back muscles, look at arm lines in your anatomy train and the little W that goes across your back. That's the system that you're working with those ones. And poking your abs is gonna help make sure that your hips are even versus having one side be a little further back, which is probably the case. Um, so you'll do 10 to 12 each arm there. Mom, you're gonna do superwomans, which is great. So you're gonna lay down on the ground, arms are gonna be out front, so you're trying to be as long as you possibly can. Think about tucking your chin so that way the back of your neck's really long. And then you're gonna try to reach up and forward, so you're trying to reach your hands forward, your feet back, and lift up, hold for a second, lower back down. Inhale to lift up, exhale to lower back down. And so with those ones, we're gonna have you 12. Um, dad, half kneeling, dumbbell chops. <laughs> so half kneeling position, one knee down, one knee up. Probably use a squishy thing, don't just use the gym floor because it's not gonna feel great on your knee. And then, you're gonna start with one dumbbell, so if my right leg is down, dumbbell is gonna be up over my right shoulder, my left foot is pushing down into the ground so both my glutes are engaged, and then I'm gonna rotate my trunk and chop over the front leg, and then come back up. So in, inhale up, exhale down. So different view, half kneeling position, make sure that you're not too close, so like feet push, push down, belly button lifts up, Left leg's down, so I start on my left side, and then exhale as I cross, inhale to open. So you'll do 10 to 12 each side there. 
Mom, your final thing this day is fluke bridge marching. So you're going to get down on the ground, uh, kind of like shrug your shoulder blades towards your butt, and butt your tail on being really long, so your back kind of pushes into the ground, and your feet push down, so you feel your butt kind of turn on. And then you're going to lift up. I like having my elbows digging into the ground and making fists, because it helps me feel more solid, so that might be a thing that you do. And then you're going to try to keep this nice and long and stable as you lift one leg up, lower down. Lift the other one up, lower down. Or, if you feel that in your back, lower yourself down a little bit, tuck your tailbone under, and kind of sweep your butt even more. And if that feels okay, you can either stay there or you can lift heels up as well. So you're either picking up or lifting heels up. And this is gonna help build more stability in your pelvis and should help with hip pain and just overall strength in your core. Um, eight to 12 per foot. Um, and then dad, your final thing is circular calf raises. Uh, so think about your toe arch, your horizontal arch for your big toe to pinky toe knuckle, right? That's super important here that it's awake. So kind of like feel it out for a second. And then you're going to roll on the insides of your feet, go up onto your big toe, roll out to your pinky toe, down on the outsides of your feet. And so you're kind of making circular calf raises. And then you'll go out to the outsides of your feet, up on your pinky toe, roll through your big toe, down on the insides of your arches. So you're gonna do six to 10 out, six to 10 in. Um, and that is day three. Sorry for the hiccups. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you soon. Day four. So, mom, you're gonna start with alternating curtsy step back to hinge. So, alternating curtsy, step back, hinge. Hiccups are still here. So, you're going to start out tall, step back. As that foot kind of slides back, you're just gonna go into a hinge and then come back up. Or slide the other foot back, hinge, come back up. I like using my arm as like counterbalance here to help my brain know that I'm crossing over. You don't have to, but as you're doing this, really think about left big toe pushing down as your weight transfers over to the side. So you're trying to make sure you keep this inner line of your leg all engaged versus popping out to your hip bone, right? So six to 10 per side there, feel it out and think about sticking your butt bone backwards. Um, Dad, you're doing something in the same same family, but you're gonna do Romanian deadlifts with internal hip rotation and you're gonna exhale as you go down. Because you should only go down as low as you can while you're exhaling. And if you go down past that point, or like old school ways where we hold our breath and stuff, it doesn't really help our bodies uh, in the way that we need to. So RDLs with internal hip rotation, think about planting your feet on the ground, uh, really have like suction cup toes, and you're going to think about inter internally rotating, so turn your knees towards each other, as you go back and imagine your butt getting really wide and your sits bones or your butt bones getting further apart from each other. Exhale, inhale to come up. And your legs are gonna externally rotate a little bit as you come up. So inhale down, sorry, no, nope, exhale down. Inhale up. So we're building new patterns with your body. Those can be weighted, but not super heavy. Um, I'd really rather you focus on like feeling what your bones are doing, like what's stretching in your butt, and if things are clunking or not. So uh, let me know if you feel any of those things. You're gonna do 10 to 12 of those. Um, Mom, the next thing you're gonna do is a toe press good morning. So you're going to have your weight close to your chest, so good morning hinge pattern, right? Um, but you're going to push your toe tips into the ground, make sure your heels are super grounded and you're standing up tall to start. And so you can hold the weight like this, you can hold it up here, it doesn't really matter to me, but it stays close to you, right? So toes pushing down, and you're gonna reach your heart forward and your butt back. Knees can kind of soften a little bit till you feel a stretch in your hamstrings. And then come back up. So super important that your belly button is lifting up and in to help support you as you go down. And back up. Because of how the weight is loaded, it is going to challenge your back muscles more than like a normal hinge where you're loaded down here. So just know that that's part of it. If it doesn't feel good, let me know. Um, and you'll do 10 to 12 of those. So, Dad, your next thing is lateral push take steps, which Mom had on day two, I think. So, she can help you with these if you want, or you can help each other. Think about your adductors meeting up at your belly button, right? So that's a whole little pulley system. So you're going to use your core muscles to help lift your leg up 
Internally rotate that femur, so make sure that you aren't hiking your hip up as you do it. Internally rotate your femur, and then push your inner arch over to the side. Lift up, rotate, push. So I'm not pushing as far as I can and losing all my form, right? My left leg stays grounded, my right leg comes up, rotates in, and then pushes. So you're going to do 10 per side there. Uh, Mom, the next thing that you're doing is single leg overhead loop pulses. So you're going to stand on one leg, have a loop around your wrists, and as far as standing on one leg, you can have it be completely on one leg, or if you want a little bounce, you can have like a kickstand, so you can be here versus completely up. And you're going to raise your arms overhead, so have a little bit of energy out like that. Think about swiveling up, lift up, and then you're going to have either fist or open hands and do a little pulse for 20 to 30 seconds each leg. Um, it's actually going to be really challenging. So if you start to feel it in your neck, bring your arms down and just keep that balance there with the external rotation feeling. Um, and let me know if that feels okay. So next, Dad, you're going to do loop wall walks. So I'm going to pretend that there's a wall in front of me. You're going to have a loop around your wrists, anywhere from forearm to wrist, and then you're going to pull them out parallel. And then you're going to soften knees, belly button up and in, try and walk all the way up the wall as far as you can without your elbows rotating out. So elbows stay scooped in, and you're trying to stretch from like armpit to hip bone as you go up. Um, if you notice that your elbows are coming out to the side, stop. Or try to scoop them in, engage your serratus, and then stretch up from there. Um, you'll do six to 10 up and down there. So if I was doing them on a wall, starting up here, walking up, high as I can, down, low as I can, parallel. Um, or you can also do dumbbell pullovers. Um, if you're doing dumbbell pullovers, it's 12 to 15. I want you to try the loop wall walks first though. Um, Mom, your final thing is farmer carry, and you're gonna grab two heavy things, um, not quite as heavy as your grip strength one the other day, but you're gonna grab these ones, squeeze your armpits together, think about your chest being wide, so your clavicles get wide and broad, Heart stays lifted, joints are nice and stacked, and then you're gonna walk six gym laps. So I was thinking the back room at Mike's where you just walk back and forth there. Um, walk till it's hard, and if it's not hard, go up and wait. Um, let me know if it feels okay on your wrists and everything. And then, Dad, your final thing is extended bird dog plank for 10 reps. So you and Mom have both done bird dogs, I think. You're going to hold the extended position. So same thing we were talking about earlier, index and thumb knuckle on the ground. Think about scooping your elbows in, so that way your elbow creases point forward towards the front of the mat, and then elbows are kind of soft. Knees are right under your hips, and your feet push into the ground. So, once you've established your tabletop position, you're going to kick your right heel back and your left arm forward, and hold that for 10 breaths. So, you're trying to make your trunk and torso as big as you can as you inhale. I'm trying to reach my left hand as far forward and my right heel as far back, and you're making sure you're not up too high, right? So, hold that, and if that gets easy over time, you can do, nope, opposite. Uh, you can do fancy ones where you hold this and then you inhale out off the center, exhale back to the center, inhale out to the side, exhale back to center. You can blame Adrian for that one. Uh, you're gonna do 10 breaths on each side and then that is the end of day four. So uh, do your best with these. Let me know if you have any questions and good luck. Love you, bye.